What are some of the things that you would see on the sideline that would clue you into a concussion? Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Heisig. I'm a concussion specialist and naturopathic physician. Today we're gonna to talk about kind of the big obvious things of concussion. So some of the big things that you might see on the sideline that would make you suspect a concussion and some of the big things you would see after a concussion that would make you wanna send an athlete to the ER. So kind of these are the big things of concussion. So the following symptoms or um, kind of signs, they're not even symptoms, they're signs. So they're things that you could actually see and objectively measure. So like a symptom is something that you feel. So a symptom is something that you feel and you can't see. It's something that's only the patient is really aware of. Nausea, for example, is a symptom. Um, a sign is something that we can observe as clinicians. So vomiting would be a sign that maybe that person feels nauseous. Um, so these are signs, these are, eight possible signs that suggest concussion happened on the field. So if the athlete is lying motionless, if there's motor ataxia, staggering, kind of discoordination, stumbling, if they go down with no protective action, so they go down floppy, if they go down with uh, no protective action in sort of a tonic um, position, so we'll talk about that in a second, tonic posturing, so like a, kind of a fencing response as they go down, uh, if there's cervical hypotonia, so their neck kind of gets floppy, if there's an impact seizure or a convulsion, um, and if they get up with a blank vacant stare. So again, those are eight, eight signs for uh, concussion. And two really, really good athlete examples of that. Um, the, the big one that covers kind of quite a few of these would be Patrick Mahomes. So when he went down, he went down um, with tonic, uh, kind of tonic posturing and a tonic, no protective action, just went down fencing. Um, he got up and kind of stumbled, uh, so he had the ataxia, and then he had a blank vacant stare. So he met four of these eight criteria that a bunch of experts got together and said, hey, if you see any of these, there's a greater than 90% agreement among us that you probably saw a concussion. Um, so Patrick Mahomes had four of those. Uh, Jonathan Taze a few years back got hit open ice. Um, he went down, again, kind of went down a little bit floppy, not so protective. When he got up, he stumbled and fell right back down. And he was kind of blank and kind of vacant and disoriented as he was making his way back to the bench. So again, a really likely concussion. So let's say the concussion happened. Let's say you saw that on the sidelines and you evaluated it and it ended up being a concussion. Here are the signs and symptoms that I tell parents and I tell coaches and I tell athletes to look for to say, hey, if these kind of show up in the next 24 to 48 hours, um, you wanna possibly head to the ER, you might need some imaging. Uh, so if you have a severe or worsening headache, if you're very drowsy or can't, you can't be woken up, if there was seizure-like activity, if there's a decreasing level of consciousness more than two hours after the injury, so your athlete's not really recognizing places or people or where you're at or why you're there, um, if there's unusual behavior, very confused, very irritable, um, weakness in the arms or numbness, uh, numbness or weakness in the arms or legs, if they're unsteady on their feet or slurred speech, so kind of seeming a little bit drunk, um, if there's fluid leaking from the ears or there's bruising under both eyes or bruising behind the ears, that's a reason to uh, get some imaging. If there's vomiting, especially recurrent vomiting, that's a reason to get some imaging. And if there's an inability to remember, remember more than 30 minutes before the injury, before the impact, that's a reason for imaging. So these are the symptoms that we're actually watching for and these are the symptoms that are actually kind of the reason that we say no new medications after a concussion. So if you had a medication that you already took, you're a type one diabetic and you had to take insulin or you had to take some, some thing before your concussion, continue to take that after by all means. But if you've got to take a new medication for a new symptom after your concussion, don't for at least the first five to seven days, um, really the first three days, but I say five to seven, because um, we don't want to miss a life-threatening symptom. We don't want you to take Tylenol and miss that severe or worsening headache. We don't want you to take a medication that covers up one of these symptoms that would warrant you going to the ER. So what are some other high yield things you should know regarding what to do after a concussion? But I would say there's three big things I would say. So the first big thing I would say is do not take ibuprofen or Tylenol in the first 24 to 72 hours. Again, you don't want to mask a red flag symptom. Uh, do not sleep for the first three hours after the injury. So your parents or your coaches or your brothers and sisters should monitor you, but they don't have to wake you unless something really seems off, like you're breathing or uh, you've really got significant symptoms that aren't going away. Uh, and please do not hibernate. You can do all the things as long as it doesn't flare your symptoms or your overall condition more than two points on a 10 point scale. So say after the concussion, you feel pretty crappy, you're at a six out of 10, uh, 10 being the worst. 
You can do whatever you want, just don't go to an eight. And there's actually new research that says in those first 48 hours, um, so while you're not taking the Tylenol, in that first 48 hours, to minimize screen time. So basically keep phone, TV, computer, keep all that screen time to less than 60 minutes for those first 48 hours, and symptoms tend to resolve a little bit quicker if we do that. What does that first week after concussion look like? You got those three things in mind, when to sleep, when to take Tylenol, and not to hibernate. So what should that week look like? After the concussion, within the first 24 to 48 hours, you wanna get evaluated by a concussion specialist, um, and you wanna begin symptom-limited activity or non-hibernating rest. Um, so rest, but still do some things here and there. By 72 hours, by that third day, you want to begin to return to daily non-sport activity as long as it's limited by your symptoms. So don't go more than two points on that 10-point scale. Um, by day five to 10, so between days five and 10, you wanna have an exercise test. So you wanna have a Buffalo concussion treadmill or a Buffalo concussion bike test to get prescribed sub-symptom threshold exercise. Additional rehab notes are that you, again, wanna begin balanced vision vestibular exercises within that first one to two weeks. So by day five to 10, you wanna be for sure, for sure prescribed exercise and maybe prescribe some balanced vision and vestibular exercises. Um, for sure, for sure, within that first one to two weeks, again, you want some manual therapy for your neck because all concussions, nearly all concussions have whiplash. Um, so if you're not addressing the whiplash, that might not take care of some of the um, if you never address your neck meaning, uh, you might never get rid of the dizziness, the blurred vision, the balance problems. Um, and understand that return to play is not based on symptoms. If you're an athlete um, and you're kind of an otherwise healthy individual, your symptoms will probably go away within five to 10 days, but that does not mean you're ready to return to sport in five to 10 days. Um, that is kind of that, how to recognize an athlete on the sidelines, uh, how to recognize when you need to send someone to the ER, and things to know for that first week of recovery. So this was a jam-packed video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about concussion PCS, go ahead and give my account a follow. Thank you.